In the first test, we'll see which knife has the sharpest edge. Then we'll see which brand has the best wire cutters. We'll see which Phillips and flathead screwdrivers will outlast the screw and which ones will fail. Then we'll see which knife blade locks are the strongest. We'll compare the corrosion resistance of each brand. When I was growing up, my favorite TV series was MacGyver. He could do just about anything with a stick of bubble gum and his Swiss Army knife. But the question is, which brand is the best? Let's find out. At a price of only around $5, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Ozark Trails. 12-in-1 multi-tool, long nose pliers, standard pliers, wire cutters, knife, bottle opener, can opener, Phillips screwdriver, all, file, saw, medium slotted screwdriver, and small slotted screwdriver. The Ozark Trails is made in China. The Ozark Trails weighs 158 grams. To test the sharpness of the knives, I'll be using this best certified sharpness tester. The way this test works, the sharpness tester measures the downward force required to cut through the test media. A double-edged razor blade is between 50 and 75. A utility blade is between 150 and 200. High-end cutter is between 250 and 375. Edges need maintenance are around 400. The clips are disposable, so I'll be using a new clip with each test. And the very affordable Ozark Trail knife is very sharp at 175. At a price of $15 is this Hart brand, which is sold at Walmart. 18-in-1 capability. The Hart brand is made in China. The Hart brand weighs 238 grams. And the Hart brand performed nearly the same as the Ozark Trail at 205. At a price of $20 is this RoverTac multi-tool. Lifetime warranty. 12-in-1 capability. Made of durable stainless steel. It claims to be rust-proof and corrosion-resistant. We're going to test that. The RoverTac is made in China. The RoverTech is by far the heaviest yet at 312 grams. And the RoverTech isn't nearly as sharp as the Ozark Trail or the Hart at 260. At a price of $21 is this Stanley brand. 12-in-1 multi-tool. Stainless steel construction. Compact and portable. Limited lifetime warranty. The Stanley brand is made in China. The Stanley weighs 221 grams. The Stanley is slightly sharper than the RoverTac at $230. At a price of $24 is this Mossy Oak Outdoor Survival Portable 21-in-1 Multi-Tool Set. The whole multi-tool is constructed of ultra-durable stainless steel. Prevents corrosion. Advanced 3D hollow structure and smooth surface and edge. All the tools actually lock into position and there's a release that has to be used in order to fold up the knife. The Mossy Oak is made in China. The Mossy Oak is the heaviest yet at 334 grams. The Mossy Oak performed about the same as the RoverTac at 255 At a price of $30 is this Gerber suspension knife. Slimmer design and focused tool pack are ideal for the everyday carry user. The knife blade locks into position. The knife blade release is on the handle. The Gerber is made in China. The Gerber suspension is pretty light at 191 grams. The Gerber suspension is the dullest yet at 270 At a price of $32 is this DeWalt MT-16 multi-tool. Comfortable handles. Easy access tool. Lifetime warranty. Once the blade is open, the blade does not lock into position. The DeWalt is made in China. The DeWalt weighs 210 grams. The DeWalt moves into third place behind the heart at 225. At a price of $50 is this Gonzo brand. Knife hardness, HRC 58. The knives and the pliers are replaceable. To use a screwdriver, it does require some assembly. Blade release lever. The Gonzo is made in China. The Gonzo weighs 275 grams. And the Gonzo is the dullest yet at 335. At a price of $64 is this Havilon brand. Includes knife, holster, extra blades, and blade remover. The blade change removal tool. The Havilon comes with six replacement blades. The Havilon does have a belt clip. The Havilon is made in Taiwan. The Havilon's pretty light at 186 grams. The Havilon is incredibly sharp at 135. At a price of $80 is this Leatherman Skeletool CX. Ultra light, full size multi tool. Includes knife blade made with premium 154 CM steel. 25 year warranty. The Leatherman Skeletool is made in USA. The Leatherman Skeletool is the lightest yet at only 146 grams. The Leatherman Skeletool performed very well at 190. At a price of $90 is this SOG brand. SOG stands for Studies and Observation Group. Patented gear driven leverage mechanism features twice the cutting and gripping power of conventional pliers. Center axis magnetic hex bit driver for enhanced capability. The knife blades and tools lock securely in place once open. The SOG is designed in Seattle and made in Taiwan. The SOG weighs 305 grams. The SOG is pretty sharp at 210. At a price of $105 is this Victorinox brand. Very nice sheath. Made in Switzerland. The Victorinox weighs 210 grams. 270 for the Swiss Army knife, the same as the Gerber suspension. At a price of $121 is this Gerber gear. The plier knives on the Gerber gear are replaceable. Blade release lever. To retract the pliers, just push in the lever and return the pliers to the original position. The Gerber gear is made in USA. The Gerber gear weighs 281 grams. The Gerber gear is slightly sharper than the Gerber suspension at 250. At $140, the Leatherman Charge Plus Multi-Tool is the most expensive brand we'll be testing. The blade is made of 154 CM. 
The knives on the pliers are replaceable. The Leatherman comes with 12 different bits, blade release lever. It also comes with a belt clip. The Leatherman Charge Plus is made in USA. The Leatherman Charge Plus weighs 237 grams. The Leatherman Charge Plus is slightly sharper than the Swiss Army knife at 265. If multi-tool weight is a factor in your purchasing decision, the Leatherman Skeletool is the lightest at 146 grams, Ozark Trail 158, Haviland 186, Gerber Suspension 191, and DeWalt 210 grams. The brand with the sharpest blade is the Haviland at 135, but the very affordable Ozark Trail performed well at 175. The Leatherman Skeletool did very well at 190, Hart 205, and SOG Power Access 210. While initial sharpness does matter, so does blade edge durability, which has a lot to do with the type of metal that's being used. Blade steel should definitely be a lot harder than aluminum. To ensure a fair test, the same amount of downward pressure will be applied to all of the blades. So let's see how well the blade holds up after we drag the aluminum across each blade 10 times. On the left is the blade before coming in contact with aluminum, and after aluminum, on the right. There's definitely quite a bit of wear that's taken place with the Ozark Trail. And the Ozark Trail went from 175 to 325, which is a 46% loss in sharpness. The heart actually looks to still be in great condition after exposure to the aluminum. And the heart went from 205 to 240 after the aluminum, only losing 15% sharpness. Even when the Rovertech blade was new, it just doesn't look very sharp. And the Rovertech started out at 260 and dulled quite a bit to 370, losing 30% sharpness. The new Stanley blade is on the left and is visibly sharper than the U Stanley blade on the right. The Stanley started out at 230 and to 350, a 34% loss in sharpness. The new Mossy Oak blade does look slightly sharper than the used blade. And the Mossy Oak started off at 255 and dulled 18% to 310. The Gerber suspension looks as though the aluminum really dulled the blade quite a bit. The Gerber suspension started off at 270 and dulled 45% to 495 and moves in the last place. The DeWalt still looks to be in pretty good condition after coming into contact with the aluminum. And the DeWalt did a pretty good job of holding its edge going from 225 to 255, a loss of only 12%. The Gonzo both new and used look pretty dull. And the Gonzo started out the dullest of all the brands at 335 and only dropped at 340. The Haviland started off the sharpest and the used blade looks very dull. And the Haviland started off at 135 and it's now the dullest blade at 650. The Leatherman Skeletool looks very sharp before and after exposure to aluminum. Very sharp at 190 and only experienced a 5% loss to 205. Very impressive. The new SOG looks pretty sharp but there's visible wear on the used blade. The SOG started off at 210 and dulled to 255, an 18% loss in sharpness. The new and the used Victorinox look to be nearly the same sharpness. The Victorinox started out at 270 and experienced an 11% loss in sharpness to 305. The new and the used Gerber look to be about the same sharpness. The Gerber started out at 250 and only dropped 7% to 270. The used Leatherman Charge Plus looks to be about as sharp as when the blade was new. The Leatherman started out at 265 and experienced a 10% loss in sharpness at 295. After knife blade exposure to aluminum, the Leatherman Skeletool has the sharpest blade at 205. However, the heart performed well at 240, DeWalt and SOG 255, and Gerber Gear 270. The red line indicates sharpness loss and the blue bar indicates the initial sharpness score. Knives that start off relatively dull, such as the Gonzo, are less likely to experience severe dulling compared to knives that start start off extremely sharp like the Haviland. However, knives that use premium steel are more likely to hold an edge over knives that use less expensive steel. In general, more expensive multi-tools held a sharp edge better than less expensive brands. So let's test the performance of the wire cutters cutting through a six penny nail. I'll first place each multi-tool in this holder. I'll then use a hydraulic press and a weight scale to measure the amount of squeezing force required to cut through the nail beginning with the Ozark Trail brand. To keep the nail from becoming a projectile, I'll place some locking pliers on the end of the nail. The Ozark Trail needed 59 pounds of squeezing force to cut through the nail. The nail did cause a small amount of damage to the cutting knives. It took a little bit more effort for the heart to cut through the nail at 67 pounds. No visible damage to the cutters on the heart. It took a lot more effort to cut through the nail with the rover tack, 105 pounds. However, the cutters did survive without any visible damage. The Stanley needed 70 pounds of force to cut through the nail. The cutters still look to be as good as new. The Mossy Oak made the cut at 65 pounds and moves into second place behind the Ozark Trail. There's a small amount of wear to the cutters. The Gerber suspension did slightly better than the Mossy Oak at 61 pounds and moves into second place. No visible damage to the cutters. It took 78 pounds of force for the DeWalt to cut through the nail. No visible damage to the cutting knives on the DeWalt. And the Gonzo really struggled to cut through the six penny nail, 129 pounds. There's no visible damage to the cutters. And the Havilon moves in the first place, cutting through the nail at only 44 pounds. The cutting knives in the Havilon are still in great shape. It took 91 pounds of force for the Leatherman Skeletool to cut through the nail. The cutters are still looking as good as new.
The SOG did very well at only 51 pounds and moves into second place behind the Haviland. The cutting knives look as good as new. The Victorinox performed very well at 58 pounds, no visible damage to the cutting knives. The Gerber gear made a popping sound at 43 pounds of pressure. Unfortunately, one of the cutting knives and the pliers broke. However, the cutting knives are replaceable, but the Gerber gear did not come with an extra set. The Leatherman Charge Plus performed very well at 48 pounds and moves into second place behind the Haviland. No visible damage to the cutters. So the Haviland came in on top at 44 pounds, Leatherman Charge Plus 48, SOG 51, Victorinox 58, and Ozark Trail 59. Let's test the strength of the Phillips screwdriver next. I'll place the Phillips screwdriver and a fastener into a socket. A torque adapter will keep track of the maximum torque. I'll use a drill press which has a wheel attached to the lever arms to apply downward pressure. I'll attach a 10 pound weight to a rope that'll go around the wheel and this will apply about 70 pounds of downward force. I went ahead and removed the belt on the drill press just to make sure we're getting accurate test results. And the very affordable Ozark Trail actually performed fairly well at 48 inch pounds before it finally cammed out. A very small amount of visible wear to the screwdriver. And the heart did quite a bit better than the Ozark Trail at 59 inch pounds before the screw broke. No visible damage to the driver. The Rover Tack made a popping sound and suddenly cammed out at 45 inch pounds. Unfortunately, the Phillips screwdriver was ruined at 45 inch pounds. The Stanley cammed out at 51 inch pounds and moves into second place behind the Hart brand. Unfortunately, the screwdriver bit on the Stanley experienced quite a bit of damage. And the Mossy Oak easily outlasted the screw. And the screw finally broke at 95 inch pounds, no visible damage to the Mossy Oak screwdriver bit. And the Gerber suspension did a great job avoiding cam out, but the bit suddenly snapped at 61 inch pounds. The Phillips bit is definitely ruined. And the Dewalt cammed out at 55 inch pounds, but there's no visible damage to the Dewalt. The Gonzo outlasted the screw, making it to 70 inch pounds. However, the Gonzo did experience some damage to the flutes. The Haviland was doing a great job until the rivets that hold the tool together suddenly broke. I continued to test until the screw finally broke at 79 inch pounds. No damage to the bit, but the Haviland multi-tool is broken. The Leatherman Skeletal Tool performed very well with the screw finally breaking at 60 inch pounds. No visible damage to the screwdriver bit. The SOG outlasted the screw. The screw broke at 59 inch pounds and there's no visible damage to the screwdriver. The Victoria Knox easily outlasted the screw. The screw broke at 58 inch pounds and the screwdriver looks as good as new. The Gerber gear outlasted the screw and the screw finally broke at 70 inch pounds. Unfortunately, all four flutes on the screwdriver are bent. The Leatherman Charge Plus outlasted the screw, and the screw finally broke at 59 inch pounds. The screwdriver looks as good as new. The only brands that outlasted the screw and didn't experience any visible damage to the Phillips head screwdriver include the Mossy Oak, Havilland, Leatherman Skeletool, Hart, SOG, Leatherman Charge Plus, and Victoria Knox. Let's test the flathead screwdriver next, beginning with the Ozark Trail brand. And the Ozark Trail cammed out at 37 inch pounds, and the Ozark Trail is pretty badly bent. The Hart cammed out at 34 inch pounds, or 3 inch pounds less than the Mossy Oak. The Hart is pretty badly bent. The Rover Tack did the best yet at 44 inch pounds, but the screwdriver is damaged. The Stanley did the best yet at 55 inch pounds. The screwdriver did experience some damage. The Mossy Oak did by far the best yet at 82 inch pounds before camming out. There is some damage to the bit, but the bit can be easily replaced. The Gerber suspension performed nearly as well as the Mossy Oak at 74 inch pounds. The screwdriver did experience a small bend. The Dewalt performed the same as the Hart brand at 34 inch pounds before camming out. It has some damage to the screwdriver. And the Gonzo did the best yet at 90 inch pounds before finally giving up. There is a small amount of damage to the bit. Since the Haviland multi-tool is broken, I'll use two sets of locking pliers to keep the multi-tool intact. 75 inch pounds for the Haviland and there's no visible damage to the bit. Unfortunately, the Leatherman Skeletal Tool didn't come with a full-size flat bit and the bit broke at 14 inch pounds. The SOG cammed out at 46 inch pounds. Unfortunately, the screwdriver blade is pretty badly bent. The Victorinox made it to 60 inch pounds before camming out. There's a very small bend, but it's still in much better condition than most of the other brands. And the Gerber gear did a terrific job at 79 inch pounds and moves into third place behind the Mossy Oak. Unfortunately, the Leatherman Charge Plus broke at 53 inch pounds. And the Gonzo came out on top at 90 inch pounds, but the Mossy Oak performed nearly as well at 82. Gerber gear did well at 79 inch pounds, Haviland 75, and Gerber suspension 75. 4 inch pounds. In the next test, let's see how much pressure it takes to fold the blade. The Ozark Trail does not have a blade lock and it only took 4 pounds of pressure to fold the blade. The Hart doesn't have a blade lock and the blade folded at only 2 pounds. The Rovertex blade lock gave up at 29 pounds. Unfortunately, part of the blade lock mechanism for the Rovertech broke off during the test. Without a blade lock, the Stanley folded at only 2 pounds. The Mossy Oak's blade lock gave up at 17 pounds. No visible damage to the blade lock mechanism on the Mossy Oak. The Gerber suspension let go at 26 pounds. The blade lock on the Gerber suspension still works, but it definitely experienced some wear and tear. 
and the DeWalt refused to let go and made it to 82 pounds. The blade lock mechanism on the DeWalt experienced quite a bit of damage, and unfortunately the blade lock release is no longer working. And the Gonzo performed very well at 77 pounds. The blade lock on the Gonzo is still working, but there's definitely some wear and tear. I didn't test the Havilon since the multi-tool is already damaged. The Leatherman Skeletool let go at 22 pounds. The blade lock mechanism for the Leatherman Skeletool unfortunately experienced quite a bit of damage. The SOG did very well at 57 pounds. Unfortunately, the blade lock mechanism on the SOG didn't survive the test. The Victorinox performed nearly as well as the SOG at 55 pounds. The blade lock on the Victorinox no longer works. The Gerber gear let go at 31 pounds. The blade lock on the Gerber has been damaged. The Leatherman Charge Plus gave up at 55 pounds. The blade lock on the Leatherman Charge Plus is bent pretty badly. The blade is stuck in the open position. For knife blade lock failure load, the Dwalt came in on top at 82 pounds, but the Gonzo performed very well at 77. SOG performed well at 57. Victoria Knox and Leatherman Charge Plus, 55 pounds. In the next test, I'll be applying a very aggressive rusting agent with hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and salt, and we'll see which of these brands is the most rust resistant. It's been about 12 hours since the test began, so let's take a closer look at each of the brands. There's quite a bit of rust on the Ozark Trail, and pretty much every tool has rust on it. Even though the heart has quite a bit of rust, it doesn't seem to be quite as bad as the Ozark Trail. The level as well as the intensity of the rust on the Mossy Oak seems to be about the same as the Heart. The Rover Tech also seems to be about the same as the Heart brand. The Gerber Gear definitely did better than the Ozark Trail. Some of the metal on the Dewalt has been painted, but the areas that are not painted seem to have done just a little bit better than some of the other brands. Most of the metal on the Gonzo has been painted, and that really helped the Gonzo avoid corrosion. The unpainted areas of the Haviland seem to perform about the same as the Gerber. The amount as well as the intensity of the rust on the Leatherman Skeletool is a little bit more than it is on the Haviland. Unfortunately, the amount as well as the intensity of the rust is pretty significant with the SOG. The Victorinox has quite a bit less rust than average. The painted as well as unpainted areas of the Gerber gear unfortunately experienced quite a bit of rust. The Leatherman Charge Plus definitely did better than average. Ergonomics and comfort are highly subjective, but it's definitely something to consider. Unless you're wearing some gloves when using the pliers, the very affordable Ozark Trail and Stanley brand are very uncomfortable on the hands. The best brands with the most handle comfort include the Leatherman Charge Plus, Mossy Oak, SOG, and Victorinox. The ease of use or the ability to access tools is another factor to consider. For example, you just about need a screwdriver to access the knife on the Ozark Trail and all the tools are very stiff. On the other hand, the Gerber gear offers very easy access and all the tools move very freely. My subjective assessment is that the Ozark Trail, Stanley, DeWalt, and the Gonzo will take a lot more effort to deploy the tools and are less ergonomically friendly compared to the Leatherman Skeletool, SOG, Gerber gear, and Leatherman Charge Plus. For under $10, the Ozark Trail definitely seems like a pretty good value. However, the ergonomics as well as the comfort just aren't very good. If you're willing to spend a little bit more money, I'm really impressed with the Mossy Oak. It performed much better than some of the more expensive brands. However, if you're not worried about the price tag and it's all about the quality, I really like the comfort, ergonomics, and performance of the Leatherman Charge Plus. It's a very nice multi-tool, but it's also very expensive. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.